Welcome back to the pregame show here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. It is time for the Broadcasters Roundtable. Darren Zazlo with you here. To my left is Newport Gulls field reporter Dave Peck. And to my right, the voice of the Danbury Westerners, Cooper Boardman. Dave, we'll start with you. A huge win for Newport yesterday. A double header sweep over the Mystic Schooners. 5-2 to two in game one, 6-3 to three in game two. Obviously the player of that game. Cameron Miser, the walk-off grand slam in the bottom of the seventh inning in game one. How huge of a hit was that for this team to hopefully propel them forward? You know, Dan, you got to think that's the hit that changes the season around. And we've been, you know, we've been standing here doing these interviews all year so far, waiting for that thing. You know, is this going to be the game? Would it, was it going to be that 20 to three win against New Bedford we had? That was not it. Could the Mystic win sweep at Fitch High School be the turning point of this season? And I say, why not? This team is feeling good. I saw everyone being very loose. All the pitchers in the pregame were out there in center field, having fun with some of the outfielders, really kind of bonding as a team. And that's kind of the first time I've seen these guys bond and come really close and do things that are a little bit looser, but look good, feel good, play, play good. And when you're loose, you play loose and you win baseball games. For the first time this year, Newport recorded back-to-back -back victories. Newport now 9-16 and entering play. A 230 team batting average, Dave, that's a number that we are continuing to see increase. Yeah, there was a time when they were totally at the bottom of the barrel as far as team batting average, and they're slowly climbing up. You know, the numbers are going forward, and that's what you like to see. And you talk about all those rainouts that we had. We had one on Friday as well and it just you know it put, gives them a little bit more time to get hot and have a couple more games later in the season when they feel like they have everything going for them so i'm excited for what's in store tonight this is a huge game against danbury the team that the goals are currently chasing danbury has a four and a half game lead on them in the division right now they are in third place holding that last playoff spot so this is huge in it and the, the the run for the playoffs i believe you said the magic number was 15 correct me i'm wrong but uh, you know it starts tonight Eric Miller will get the ball on the mound for Newport. The southpaw out of Stanford this year has been excellent. Dave, I know you had a chance to interview him. What has helped him be so successful this season? Getting up in counts and really attacking batters with his fastball. He's had excellent command of it, and that, that, that cut that he gets on it from the left side has really kept batters a little bit uneasy. And, you know, he mentioned to me when I talked to him, first time through he likes to kind of test the water, see if they can hit it, and then after that he'll make adjustments. He has a great rapport with his catcher in Ty Duval. So we'll see what happens tonight, but he's been very good for the goals so far this season. Cooper Danbury enters tonight's contest with a 14 and 12 overall record. Let's talk about this offense, a 234 team batting average. What have you seen from the Westerners bats this year? That's well, a really fascinating offense when you talk about this team in the context of this entire season. You start off at the beginning of the year, they were the best offense in the NECBL, hands down, clubbing home run after home run, led the New England Collegiate Baseball League in that category through 15 games. And since then, we've seen that drop off. And, well, there are a few reasons for that. First of all, after tonight, the Danbury Westerners will have played 27 games. Only eight of those have been in the friendly confines of Rogers Park, their home field where it's 360 to dead center. Balls are flying out of there. They haven't had the opportunity to get the totals up in that department. Past that, well, Danbury has won baseball games with timely hitting in particular. We've seen them win games uh, coming back from behind. You go back to a couple weeks ago against New Bedford. Trailed by a run going into the sixth inning in game two of a doubleheader. A double by Griffin Day, double by Joe Durpich, and they picked up a victory. They stole a game against Winnipesaukee, trailing 2-0, two two-run home runs in the sixth inning, and that one to get the victory. For Danbury, it's, about, it's been about getting the hits when it's mattered most. We'll see what Dan Barry can do tonight offensively. They are led by Griffin Day. The Yale product is hitting 338 this season. That is tied for the seventh best batting average in the NECBL with Newport's Andrew Dashbach. Day also leads Dan Barry with 23 hits. What have you seen from him? He's another fascinating one. He's the catalyst in the middle of this lineup. He started the year over the first couple of weeks of the season, was not an everyday player by any sense of the matter, but he's come on of late. And I take you back to that game against New Bedford that I mentioned back on June the 26th. Dan Barry in that ball game trailed. He ultimately hit the game tying RBI double, came around to score with the game winning run as well in that ball game. Since that day, a few weeks ago, he's hitting above 350, has two home runs, double-digit RBIs, and he has been absolutely torrid of late. 
Danbury also a team that has gone on winning streaks, losing streaks. Cooper, what does this team need to do to play consistent baseball? Well, it all comes down to the pitching, and this is something you and I have talked about all year long. The pitching in this league is the most important thing. If you can get guys out, you can pick up victories. It's as simple as that. Danbury has lost its top two starters this year to injury. Cooper Wallace's season is done, and the Mac Pitcher of the Year, Charlie Gerla, is also done through an injury. So now you look toward the guy on the mound tonight. He becomes the de facto number one. Baylor Sundahl on the bump. He's been the best pitcher that still remains in the Stan Barry Westerners rotation. And if Dan Barry can stay consistent in the back end, especially that bullpen, they can also find success. First pitch between Dan Barry and Newport set for 6.35 p.m. here on Clements Marketplace night. For Dave Peck and Cooper Boardman, I am Darren Zaslow. The Newport Gulls pregame show continues next right here on the NECBL Broadcast Network.